Hello, athletes, and welcome to the 2022 Toyota USA Triathlon Age Group National Championships pre-race event briefing. My name is Brian D'Amico. I'll be your race director for the event. As I go through this presentation, this will all be recorded, so you're able to go back um, to listen to previous slides. Um, hopefully, those will help answer any questions. Um, as I go through, I'll speak about some key items to know for the race, um, not only logistically, uh, but also course related items and talking through each one of the courses as well as a very detailed event schedule. First and foremost, a huge thank you to Sports Milwaukee and Visit Milwaukee for their support of this event. Um, this will be our second year here for Age Group National Championships. Uh, we were also in Milwaukee in 2013 through 2015. So once you arrive on site, um, I can think it'll be very clear the city support that is given, um, not only from the city and other governing entities, um, but also by Milwaukee Art Museum and Discover World. Um, these are just 10 very, very top line reasons to compete that Sports and Visit Milwaukee have been able to put together for us. Um, there's so many things to do in and around the city, um, and we couldn't ask for a better backdrop for the race. We will also be hosting our 2022 BOA USA Triathlon Foundation Gala and Hall of Fame induction. Um, that will be held Thursday, August 4th uh, at Discover World. So that is right on the way, race site. Um, tickets are still available. And in order to purchase tickets, um, please visit usatriathlonfoundation.org. Um, it's going to be an amazing night. Um, some great Hall of Fame inductees, um, as well as a chance to mingle with fellow athletes, um, as well as a lot of individuals from the city of Milwaukee and the surrounding area. Whether you're racing or spectating, um, either way, our USA Triathlon Events app is a great tool uh, for you to find additional event information, um, not only pertaining to age group nationals, but also our other national championships if you have participated or will be participating in those. Um, it allows you to track athletes, link to specific information on the website, um, finisher certificate, as well as push notifications that will take place. So you can download this both in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Um, and again, the app's name is the USA Triathlon Events app. Now jumping into the schedule. Um, so as I progress through each of these slides, I won't go through line item by line item, um, but really just highlight those key important pieces. Uh, the most comprehensive information is listed on our website uh, for Toyota Age Group National Championships. But again, this will give you some top line, very specific information as far as how the race week and weekend will lay out. As I alluded to on Thursday, August 4th, um, our BOA USA Triathlon Foundation Gala and Hall of Fame induction will take place. We will also be hosting Packet Pickup and the Expo at the Packet Pickup Tent at the Milwaukee Art Museum Lawn. Um, one very important thing to know, and I'll probably mention this a couple of times throughout the webinar, um, is that no swimming is prohibited uh, prohibited on the course outside of your race time and scheduled swim warm time. So this goes into a lot of factors, not only permitting, but also from a safety aspect side of things. Jumping into Friday, uh, packet pickup will run concurrently with a mandatory bike check-in for all Olympic distance athletes. Um, these both will run from 10 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. Um, please note there's no parking at the venue. Um, in a few slides, I will touch on parking for the event. Um, there's nine plus garages within walking distance, as well as many of the hotels you're likely staying at are with walking, within walking distance of the venue as well. Bike check-in uh, will be in, uh, technically the park's name is Urban Park, uh, which is our transition area. It's right next to Discover World. You won't be able to miss it uh, with 3,000 uh, of your other closest friends will be in there as well. Um, so that bike check-in, uh, please make sure you have your bike. You're really just bike, dropping your bike off the day before. Um, so that is a mandatory bike check-in for Olympic distance athletes. Um, that will be secured um, by security both during the day as well as overnight security. So then when you come race morning, you're just bringing your race essentials in that you need for the race. Your bike is already racked. At 11 a.m., 11.15 a.m., 11.18 a.m., and 11.20 a.m., we will be having our open water swim competition. So that is a race you must have registered for in order to race in that. We'll have four different categories with men, women, non-binary, and PC open waves, um, all starting between the 11 o'clock a.m. and 11.20 a.m. timeframes. We'll then shift into an open water swim familiarization for both Olympic and sprint distance athletes. This is a 750 meter course, which will be set for this race. Again, you must have checked in and picked up your packet prior to participating in this. 
When you do participate, it's mandatory that not only you wear your timing chip for safety and accountability purposes, but also your event issued swim cap. We're super excited at three o'clock p.m. at UW Milwaukee Panther Arena. Um, we're excited to host Laura Bennett. Um, she will be sitting down with her husband, Greg, um, to have Olympic conversation. So it'll be very interactive presentation that we're doing. Uh, super grateful that they're able to come out um, and it should be a great time for that hour time frame between about three o'clock p.m. and four o'clock on Friday. We're also hosting a kids splash and dash. Um, I will get to those slides in a few, um, but this is free for all kids, um, really ages seven through 15. Um, this will take place at the venue, um, just past the pedestrian bridge next to Discovery World. So um, it's free for all kids. They also provided a free youth membership. Um, so that will also be taking place. So whether you have a, a young one participating or just want to come out to watch, um, it should be a great event for those kids. Okay, we're on to race day. So very quickly, I won't go through each of the wave start times, um, but kind of those key information and items that you need to know are transition will be open from 4.55 a.m. to 6.55 a.m. So mandatory, you're checked into transition. Your bike will have already been checked in the day prior. Um, transition will have a hard closure at 6.55 a.m. Um, once that happens, the expo will also be running, um, not only during late packet pickup, but also during race day and race times from about 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with a few vendors opening at 5.30 a.m. Um, waves will start beginning at 7 a.m. They vary in times between every five minutes to about 22 minutes based off of course density, based off of the algorithm that we plug, not only the number of athletes per wave into, but the average times of athletes um, based off of this course. So as we roll through here, um, we'll start with male 24 and under and then progress from there. As it relates to swim warm up on race days, we will let the first two waves down into the water. The first wave will start in the swim start area. The second wave will be directly adjacent to that in the swim warm up area. So you'll have between five to 10 minutes to do a warm up before you slide over to your swim start area. We'll continue through those waves. Um, we will hit 938 when we'll have our non binary all ages taking off, our open male non championship wave at 943 open female wave, and then open non-binary wave um, with the swim cutoff at 10.50 a.m. and a bike cutoff at 11.50 a.m. The course will close in its entirety um, at 1.05 p.m. Once the course closes, um, please be diligent in checking your bikes out of transition. Uh, all bikes must be out of transition by that 1.05 time frame. Um, really from our end operationally, we're flipping transition. So all those bikes and athletes that were in transition for Saturday's race, those are all checked out. We're re-stickering so then we can open up sprint bike check-in, which is, which is mandatory for those sprint distance athletes at 2.40 p.m. on Saturday. So sprint bike check-in will run from 2.40 p.m. to 4.45 p.m. We'll also have a swim practice um, that takes place from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock on Saturday. And then our Olympic distance award ceremony taking place at UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena from 5.15 to 6.45 p.m. Sunday is very, very similar. Uh, transition will have the same open and close times between 4.55 a.m. and 6.55 a.m. with a closure at 7 o'clock and the first wave starting at 7 o'clock. So we'll kick it off with males 15 through 19 in mint green caps. One important thing to note is that the mint green caps and fluorescent green caps are somewhat similar to one another. Um, once you put them side by side, it's much easier to tell. But just be aware between those two different caps that one is mint, more minty, and one is more fluorescent. We'll continue waves with the last wave start being at 9.23 a.m. with a swim cutoff at approximately 10 o'clock a.m. and a bike cutoff at 10.55 a.m. Uh, the course will close in its entirety at 11.35 a.m. Um, with an estimated road open around 12.30. Uh, immediately following the race, we'll slide into our sprint distance award ceremony, which will take place from 1 to 2.30 at the same location as the Olympic distance award ceremony at UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena. For those athletes that are doing two races, um, we've tried to make this much easier for you uh, based off of when you finish your Olympic distance race and how you transition over to your sprint distance race. So you have a couple different options. Um, both those options require you going back into transition um, once transition opens for bike checkout. So your options are um, checking your bike out, taking your bike, but then returning when 
mandatory sprint distance bike check-in is set to take place on Saturday afternoon between 2.40 and 4.45 p.m., where you put your new sticker on your bike with your athlete number and then re-racking your bike in the appropriate rack position or the other option we have for you is that we will have a set of open racks within the secure transition area lining the outside. So another option that you may take is if you're racing both Olympic and sprint distance races. You can unrack your bike from your Olympic distance spot, put it on the open racks. Um, the biggest important thing is race morning. You can then come back to the venue when transition is open between that 455 and 655 timeframe put your new bike sticker on and re-rack in your appropriate spot. Um, you may not leave your bike in the open racking location. Again, you must re-rack your bike in the appropriate sprint distance location for your number. Again, just a reminder um, that if you are doing more than one race, you will have a different number for each race. Um, all numbers are unique to each athlete and there are no duplicate numbers. Um, it is not open racking in general. Um, all athletes will have assi an assigned location within transition in which they're racked with their age group. Pack and pick up an expo. Um, so super top line. So we will have those taking place on Thursday, August 4th from 2 to 6 p.m. Friday, August 5th from 10 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. On Saturday, August 6th, it is only a sprint distance late packet pickup taking place from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then on Sunday, the expo will be running from 5.30 a.m. until 12 o'clock p.m. Parking information. Um, so there's 10 plus separate parking garages. Um, many of those are close to the venue for walking distance. Um, information is also posted on our website as well as you can visit parkmilwaukee.com. In this map here, you'll notice uh, the venue area is where my cursor is. So this is Discover World here. Um, so various different lots. And please know that all lots do also offer ADA parking as well um, for ease of access. The closest lot is lot number two, which is the Museum Center parking. Um, but all of these garages are within a 10 to 15 minute walk maximum. Parking passes. So we're super excited to offer those this year. Um, we'll be offering on-site parking only for those that have purchased parking passes. So if you haven't purchased a parking pass for this, um, you're not permitted to park on-site. Um, just a, a couple quick details regarding that. So these are on sale here at the link listed below, um, which is also posted on our website. Um, those that purchase these parking passes must enter the garage between the hours of 4.30 a.m and 5.45 a.m. Um, these are only valid on Saturday, Sunday, or you may purchase both Saturday and Sunday. Um, these will sell out. You must be in the garage, again, between those hours of 4.30 a.m. and 5.45 a.m., and then you are not permitted to leave the garage until after the race is complete. Um, so very important because you cross the course, um, you won't be able to leave until the race is complete. So once you do that, um, after it's complete, you'll be permitted to leave. Um, also, one important thing to know is that the height restriction for the garages are six feet, seven inches. For the bike course prior to race day, um, please note that the bike course is rideable. Um, the roads will not be closed prior to race day. The only exception is that you may not ride on the portion that travels over the home bridge, nor I-794. That's a highway, um, so it's not permitted for athletes to ride. And if you are riding over that, you will be ticketed. It becomes a major safety permitting concern um, that not only we have um, as the governing body, um, but also the city of Milwaukee as well. Athlete ID race system placement. Um, so we tried to simplify this. This is a screenshot of the envelopes that everyone will be receiving during packet pickup. Um, you will have a quad set of tattoos. Um, so if you see my cursor here, these will go on the outside of each bicep and then the outside of each leg. You'll also be given a race bib, um, which is mandatory to wear at a minimum on the run. You do not need to wear it on the bike course. And then you will see, receive two bike sticker helmets. Um, one, is those, one of those is to go on the front of the helmet. One of those is to go on the left side of your helmet. And then additionally, you will receive a bag check sticker and or spectator sticker. Um, I will jump into the bag uh, check sticker here in a minute. Um, but the top portion here, this longer sticker is your seat post sticker. So you wrap that around your seat post adhere it to the other side, um, and then that will stay on your bike so you can be easily identified on the bike course. 
you also be receiving a wristband. Um, so this wristband will be color coded and will also have your athlete number printed on that wristband. So this is for additional security purposes. Um, if you're racing multiple races, the sprint and Olympic distance race, you'll receive two wristbands, for example, each of those being a different color. Body marking, as I alluded to, those will be issued at packet pickup. Um, again, ensuring your number is written on your swim cap. So all athletes will be issued a specific swim cap color based off of your race and wave that you're participating in. Once you've gone through the packet pickup line, we will have a mandatory swim cap number at station that you will write your swim cap number on your swim cap prior to exiting the registration and packet pickup flow. Timing chips, they must be worn around the ankle, preferably on your left ankle. Um, it's the athlete's responsibility to ensure your timing chip is brought to and worn during the race. Um, if you are participating in multiple races, you'll receive one chip, although you'll have a different race number for each of those two races. At the completion of your final race, uh, we will have volunteers and medical staff pull your timing chip to turn in. Um, so again, very important athlete's responsibility to have your timing chip. If you happen to forget your timing chip, we will have our sports desk timing team at Swim Start that will be able to reissue a timing chip. Again, please do all that you can to make sure you remember your timing chip. My recommendation is always maybe put it around your ankle the night before um, so you sleep in it or have it literally put it on your doorknob so when you leave out of your hotel room, you can make sure to grab that prior to going to the venue. Rules for the event um, are under the commission of Commissioner of Officials Mark Turner. Um, USAT rules will be enforced, so of course, know the rules. Um, one important thing to note, similar to last year and other national championships, is that the on-course penalty notification procedure will be implemented. So there's a separate rules briefing um, that is posted as well, um, but you can also visit that briefing by going to the event page, clicking on rules enforcement, and then the hyperlink there. It's about a 10 to 12 minute video um, that details as well as some text as well that further details that. We will have signage placed around the venue specifically during packet pickup regarding the blue card and yellow cards um, with some further additional information on that as well. Bike check-in, which we've already touched upon, um, this will be in the BOA transition at Urban Park, directly adjacent to Discover World. Mandatory bike check-in for Olympic distance athletes on Friday, August 5th from 10 a.m. to 5.15 p.m., and then sprint distance athletes on Saturday, August 6th, between 2.40 and 4.45 p.m., which is also mandatory. Um, you must have your wristband, which will be given at Packet Pickup, as well as your bike number. Um, bike support will be provided by Play Try. So on race mornings, they'll have bike support within transition. They'll have a secondary location, which is their main or primary location in the expo area, directly next to the USAT store. Event secure venue and security. Um, so even more so than last year, we'll still have an increased security press presence. So please be prepared for bag searches at the race venue and super, super important to not leave any bags or backpacks lying around the venue uh, or of course unattended. Uh, we will have a bag check tent directly adjacent to the transition area, which I will jump into those procedures here. Um, each participant will get a clear plastic bag at pack and pickup to store their gear. Um, those are 18 by 24 inches. So Race morning, you're going into transition. You have your, your canvas transition bag or what have you. You're leaving only race essentials at your rack position. Once you have everything done there, you're taking the non-race essentials out of transition. So these are either in your backpack, things that you're carrying. Everything needs to then fit within this 18 by 24 inch clear plastic bag. So you can take your transition bag put that in your clear plastic bag and then check that. Or you can take those things out of your transition bag, put those in the clear plastic bag, and then also put your transition bag in there and check it. So at the end of the day, everything needs to fit within this bag. Um, those will be checked in the secure area within our bag check tent next to transition. Um, no bags of any kind will be allowed in transition while the races are underway. So hopefully that helps to clarify it a bit is that bags can come into transition. Once you have everything set up with race essentials only, you're taking your bag out of transition and then checking it within the bag check area. Walking through the venue to get a little bit of lay of the land. So the BOA transition zone is located here at the southern part of the map. As we go through the swim start area is directly in front of Discover World um, on the dock area. We will have a few coaches VIP areas um, that coaches that are safe, 
Safe Sport Certified. Um, that will be next to the finish line behind Swim Start, as well as the swim staging area. Um, located throughout the venue, and as it's seen on these maps, are portable restrooms. So we'll have two banks of those restrooms with in-transition, two banks by Swim Start, and then two kind of main in the main venue area. Um, additionally, we'll have a small area within the expo area um, that is also close to the bike support tent. Packet pickup and the USAT store will also be located in this area, as well as the VIP and open water swim packet pickup. Moving to the west, 11 is post-race food. Um, finish line is noted here. Along the finish line area will be the VIP tent, um, another coach's viewing area, as well as all the VIP related activities. Um, number seven is medical. So as soon as athletes, if athletes may need medical upon crossing the finish line, medical will be located there. For those that utilize tri-bike transport uh, for their bike shipping needs is located in area in polygon number four. And then just south of that, between transition and tri-bike transport, is our bag check tent, as well as our volunteer and information tent. Um, water monsters for hydration are located two, in two areas. Um, one is close to swim start, and one is by the fountain next to post-race food in the finish line. For the BOA transition area, uh, mountain dismount lines will be very clearly marked. Uh, the mountain line will be a green line that is on the ground. Um, the dismount line will be a red line. Bike racks, again, will be individually numbered. Uh, when you start the race, please ensure that you're racking by your seat with only race essentials allowed in transition. Again, race morning, bike support will be, be provided by PlayTry for basic bike needs. Bike checkout for the Olympic distance race will begin at approximately 11.45 a.m. And sprint distance bike checkout will begin at approximately 10.35 a.m. Here's a map of transition, just kind of has the flow works. Um, so swim in, you will enter through the southwest corner of transition. Grab your bike. You'll be exiting through the bike out, which will be clearly delineated by not only cones and barricades, but also there'll be very large signage on each outer side where bike out and run out are. So you'll come out, complete the bike, coming back in in the same separated chute as swim in in the southwestern corner, and then you're running out in the northeast corner. As I alluded to, we will be having our open water swim competition. This is on Friday. Again, this is a registered event. So registration is still open for that event. It was within, it's on the registration page on the Age Group National website. Very simple, straightforward, 750 meter course. Orange buoys are sight buoys. Yellow buoys are turn buoys. So those yellow buoys will actually be circular or spherical buoys, as will the orange buoys. With the way that this course out course lays out, all buoys must be kept on your right shoulder. So although the orange spherical buoys are sight buoys, all buoys, again, must be kept on your right shoulder. The swim familiarization will take place on Friday from 1140 to 115, and then also Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. Again, very similar. If you're getting in the water, you must complete the entire course. So you must enter at the start area and you must exit at the swim exit area. Jumping into the swim course for Olympic distance. So it'll be a one lap 1500 meter course. Um, we do anticipate a wetsuit legal swim. As of uh, two days ago on 725, the water temperature was 66.57 degrees. It'll be an in-water start with your hand on the dock. Um, those yellow buoys are your turn buoys, and the orange round buoys are your sight buoys, but you must keep those on your right shoulder. Um, please make sure, again, it's the athlete's responsibility to re review the maps and, and to know the course. Um, we will have plenty of on-water support with boats, lifeguards, kayaks, coast guards. Um, very important that you're at the start 20 minutes prior to your wave starts. Know your wave time, know your wave cap color, make sure you're there in plenty of time. Um, and again, just an additional re reminder that all buoys must be kept on your right shoulder. Okay, the swim course. So walking through this again, as I had touched on earlier, um, swim start will be located in this area. All buoys will be kept on your right shoulder. As you swim under this uh, pedestrian bridge, it's approximately 80 feet in width. So it's a little bit tight, but there will only be one way swim tra traffic going under that bridge. Once you hit this area here, um, this is where this yellow buoy, these yellows will actually be circular buoys and not triangular. 
this will be kept on your right shoulder and you're bouncing to the outside. So you're coming to the outside around these few turn buoys and then it's a straight shot that you're siding off the orange zone three swim exit gantry at the swim exit. Um, it'll be a stair exit at that location and then you'll have a short run into transition. The Olympic distance bike course is a one lap, mostly flat course. Um, this is completely close to traffic, which we are very grateful to have for athlete safety and competitiveness. Um, USAT will have officials on course and please stay to the right of the center yellow line in the areas that are cone. Uh, there's a slight change in the course from last year, uh, which I will touch on on the next map. So the Olympic distance bike course, you will exit transition. Uh, you will take an immediate right going down Lincoln Memorial Drive. Super, super important, and we'll have this very clearly coned, is that when you're going outbound, you will have the interior lane and a half closest to the median, and there will be inbound run traffic for a portion on Lincoln Memorial Drive coming into the finish line. Um, that run traffic will have the outside or curb lane, um, half a lane coming back into the venue to the finish. So you're heading on the bike, doing your first 180 at the intersection of Lincoln Memorial Drive and Lake Drive, heading back passing by transition on Lincoln Memorial Drive, going over the home bridge on 794, and then you're continuing down. Um, you will continue past the Howard Avenue on-ramp, um, continuing down Highway 794 until that ends just prior to Pennsylvania Avenue. You'll do a 180 coming back, and then you will exit off of the Howard Avenue exit bridge. That'll be one-way traffic exiting that bridge where you'll take a right-hand turn onto Howard Avenue, a right-hand turn onto South Lake Drive, a left onto East Armor Avenue, and then a right onto South Sheridan. So these roads will be completely closed. You'll then do a 180 at South Sheridan, uh, approximately an eighth of a mile down on South Sheridan. Come back up South Sheridan to a left on East Armor, a right on South Lake Drive, and a left on Howard Avenue. As you travel down Howard Avenue, you'll then make a right-hand turn to the on-ramp 794, Continues down 794, up and over the Hone Bridge, and then a right 180 for a short stretch prior to dismounting into transition. The Olympic distance run course is a one lap 10K course. Uh, the majority of this takes place on Veterans Park, and you will have a short stretch that will be on Lincoln Memorial Drive after you make the transition from the sidewalk just past Bradford Beach to Lincoln Memorial to head back to the venue. We will be offering four aid stations with Gatorade Endurance, Water, and Science and Sport Gels. Um, one of those aid stations will be passed twice, so technically there will be five total aid stations, and there will be plenty of volunteers, medical, and police on course. Here is a detail for the Olympic distance run course. So coming out of transition, in the first half a kilometer, you hit your first aid station. You'll then come out on Oak Leaf Trail, where you make a right-hand turn onto this peninsula. Going out here, making the 180, coming back where you hit your second aid station, coming back through in into Veterans Park. So on your outbound route for the Olympic distance race, you'll be in the Oak Leaf Pave Trail. Um, this is a nice shaded area here next to this um, smaller pond. All the way out Oak Leaf Trail, going past uh, Lincoln Memorial Drive and East Water Tower Road intersection just past Bradford Beach. Um, this area here where my cursor is was when you'll transition from the sidewalk to the road. So we'll have a ramp laid down for this. You'll be running back curbside in the lane and a half, or sorry, the half a lane closest to the curb. Continuing down Lincoln Memorial Drive, this aid station here where my cursor is, is one that you'll hit, uh, it'll be double-sided. You'll hit on the outbound and inbound route on the run. And then a straight shot down Lincoln Memorial Drive. Once you pass Milwaukee Art Museum, we'll transition you from the road back up to the sidewalk to finish on the red carpet to the finish line. The sprint distance swim course, very similar to Olympic. It's a one lap 750. Um, in water start, same start procedure, same buoy procedure. So yellow circular buoys are your turn buoys, must be on your right shoulder. Orange circular spherical round buoys must be kept on your right shoulder or, and are used as sight buoys. Detailing the sprint distance swim course, again, starting with in water, hand on dock, coming through under the pedestrian bridge, one right turn, another right turn, and then a straight shot to the swim exit. The bike course for sprint distance is a one lap, mostly flat course. The course is entirely close to traffic, traffic with no bottle exchange. Uh, again, USAT officials will be on the course. 
Walking through the flow of the sprint distance race, um, exiting transition, very similar to the Olympic distance race, taking a right-hand turn on Lincoln Memorial Drive. Going down Lincoln Memorial Drive prior to your 180 at the intersection of Lake Drive and Lincoln Memorial. Coming back towards the venue over the home bridge, you'll make your 180 on 794 just prior to Russell Avenue, which runs under 794. So that will be very, very clearly marked from our side of things. Um, making your 180 back up and over the home bridge and then into transition. It'll be a one lap 5K run for the sprint. Again, very similar. Majority takes place in Veterans Park. Um, there'll be three aid stations offering the same offerings. And again, plenty of volunteers, police, and medical on course. Walking through the sprint distance run course. Um, so very similar Oak Leaf Trail, you're going out onto this peninsula area, not going quite as far as the Olympic distance race. Coming back around, hitting your second aid station, taking a right on Oak Leaf Trail. Um, this is where it differs from the prior race day. So as you're coming out, you're going to go around the small pond, hitting another aid station, coming back on the sidewalk and continuing down there. Um, taking a quick right-hand turn to get on to Lincoln Memorial Drive and then a straight shot into the finish line. Finish line will be offering water, Gatorade endurance formula, plenty of medical support, finisher medal, and then once you finish, you'll be ushered out of the finish line area um, to the post-race snack and food area. Award ceremony. So as I alluded to before, those will take place at UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena. Um, Olympic distance awards will take place on Saturday night from 515 to 645 p.m. And sprint distance will be on Sunday from 1 to 230 p.m. Awards categories, again, all of this is posted on the website, but very quick top line is that for sprint distance triathlon and sprint distance and Olympic distance triathlon uh, for those national championship races, uh, we will go 10 deep per age group for both male and female. Um, those race categories that we would go three deep for male and female include Clydesdale Athena and Olympic and Sprint, um, open water swim competition for overalls. Um, you'll see the age categories noted here, as well as time to tribe open waves. So those are non-championship waves that we will also be awarding awards for. Compete clean. Um, so this is supported by USADA. So all national championships that USA Triathlon produce are subject to drug testing. Um, if you do need further information, please visit the USADA, so the United States Anti-Doping Agency website, um, for any additional information as it pertains to this. The Team USA Lounge presented by KT Tape will also be in effect as it was last year. Um, this will be in a room directly adjacent to the award ceremony arena, so still within UW Milwaukee Panther Arena for the award ceremony. So. Those will take place on Saturday, August 6th um, from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, and as you can see, that runs during the time of the Olympic Distance Award Ceremony on Saturday. And Sunday, the Team USA Lounge presented by KT Tape will be running from 12.30 to 4 o'clock p.m. Um, for this race and for Team USA, uh, attendance is mandatory at the award ceremony to claim your Team USA spot. However, if you are unable to attend, you must have a surrogate attend on your behalf and confirm the contact details and interest on behalf of you. Um, if you have any questions pertaining to Team USA, please email Hans. Uh, we have a lot of information also posted on the website. Um, but just kind of very quick top line is that at the age group national championships for the sprint distance race, Eight spots per age group will qualify for the draft legal sprint triathlon in Hamburg, Germany in 23, rolling down to 20th place. And for the Olympic standard distance race, 18 spots per age group rolling down to 30th place will qualify for Pontevedra, Spain in 2023. I touched on this before, but we are super, super excited to host a free youth splash and dash. Um, again, ages seven through 15, uh, swimming 100 meter uh, swim course for ages 7 through 10, 200 meter swim course for ages 11 through 15, and then running a 1K and a 2K respectively for the 7 through 10, 11 through 15 age groups. Um, so that athletes will receive a goodie bag, finisher medal, free youth USA Triathlon membership. Um, and this is a registered event. So please make sure you visit our web, web, website to get any kids between those ages registered. 
Um, this will be at Lakeshore State Park on the Pebble Beach. So in order to get to this area, we'll be sending out some more information as well as you're crossing over. You're going to the main swim star area from Discover World, crossing the pedestrian bridge to get over to the small Pebble Beach area. I touched on this earlier. Um, again, we'll have an Olympic conversation with two-time Olympian Laura Bennett with husband Greg Bennett. Um, this is a completely free event and is open to the public. Um, this will be taking place on Friday, August 5th at 3 o'clock p.m. at UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena. U.S. Center for Safe Sport. Um, so super, super important, um, not only at this event, but, but all events, is the MAP is the Minor Athlete Abuse Prevention Policies. Um, the U.S. Center for Safe Sport developed this policy in 2019, um, which is also available in more detail on our website. So a few of the key policies that make up the MAP are one-on-one -on -one interactions with youth, meaning in training sessions, uh, massages, rub downs, things of that nature, locker rooms and changing areas, electronic communications, transportation, and lodging. So if you do witness any uh, any items that may seem out of place um, or anything happening that uh, have no belonging, please report that, that to the U.S. Center for Safe Sport. Um, there's also a, a small ban list. So these are people that have been banned and or suspended by USA Triathlon or the U.S. Center for Safe Sport and cannot participate in any USA Triathlon event. So note that from our side of things, we'll be checking athletes, volunteers, and other participants for members of the ban list prior to and during the event and throughout event weekend. A huge thank you to all of our partners, as well as travel partners. So they provide a lot of the deliverables, a lot of the support that we get for these events to make it the best possible experience for you as athletes and spectators that are coming to this event. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a huge thank you to all these entities. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg for the entities that are involved in the planning of this event. So starting with Visit and Sports Milwaukee, but also the City of Milwaukee, City of Cudahy, City of St. Francis, um, all the sheriffs, police entities, Advocate Aurora, um, as well as the Art Museum and Discover World. Um, the Milwaukee Art Museum and Discover World will be open. Um, up until race days. So if you're in and around the area, please get over to visit those those two areas. They're extraordinary. Um, again, those are both right on the venue that provide not only tremendous support, but also a great backdrop for the event. Um, again, our staff, our USA Triathlon staff and contractors, but also really the volunteers, um, as you all know, as athletes and those attending, we can't put on these races without the support of volunteers. So having the local community um, not only buy into what we're doing, but also Welcome athletes with open arms coming to the city of Milwaukee. Um, it's so great to see. If you have any additional questions, uh, please send these to national events at usatriathlon.org. Um, and again, if you haven't already, please download the USA Triathlon events app, which is located both on the uh, Google Play Store as well as the Apple Store. Um, thank you to everyone. Looking forward to seeing you in Milwaukee, and, and we will see you soon.